Okay, today's project is to use this Turbo Revive cleaner to clean the intake, the EGR, the turbo, and uh, everything in that part of the system, really. It probably goes through, I don't know if it still has swirl flaps and things like that in this BMW engine, but I did this once before. Some of you may have seen on the Range Rover. Um, we needed two bottles for that one, but anyway. This uh, Turbo Revive is sprayed into the intake and it mixes with the air. You uh, have to disconnect the, uh, the intake after the air filter and after the MAF so that you don't upset the airflow sensor. Uh, and then just spray it in. You have to run the engine at three different rev ranges uh, to get it to go on to boost and then under boost and then leave it to sit a while and then a third time. So that's basically it, essentially. You get a little pump. We're not going to use that because we're going to invert the bottle. Um, you screw the pump onto the top. This brown liquid cleaning stuff, God knows what it is. Uh, and then you spray it and mix it with the air while the engine's running at the three different uh, rev ranges. And uh, the idea is that it um, dissolves and mixes and removes all of the oily gunk that the diesel and EGR combustion products make um, accumulating in the intake. So I did it once before and uh, as a preventative sort of maintenance piece uh, for the Range Rover, there was nothing wrong with uh, my turbo or EGR or EGRs in that one. Um, but it can't hurt. I say it can't hurt. Some people have said it uh, may have upset their engine, but I don't see how it can really. So uh, let's do it on this. Anyway, it's, uh, it's got loads of miles on it. There's a very good chance it's pretty filthy and gunky inside. Give it a give it a go. Right. So first thing you want to do is remove your engine cover. Now I don't think we're going to need many tools really. We're going to need a turbo revive, a pump, and a flat bladed screwdriver because this point here is where I'm going to inject the liquid. You've got your air box and your air filter here, so your air comes in, goes through the filter, runs along here, that there, that mass airflow. So this point here is where I'm going to disconnect this uh, and uh, spray it in. So. Right, now the instructions aren't complicated, but um, just, it's all written on the inside here. So, uh, not, not with any words, it's all international, so you can get the idea. Don't do it when the engine is hot, so do it when the engine's cold, it's fairly cold now. Do what I've just done, spray it upside down. 25 pumps, and the first time, you can do it. Pump it 25 times, start the engine and run the engine at about two and a half thousand RPM. And then you do it straight away again and reduce the revs down to 1800. Then you turn the car off for four minutes, let it sit, and it's, I presume it's uh, all working its magic. And then you pump it 25 times again and do it at exactly 2000 RPM. And then you let it tick over for uh, a few minutes until the clouds of smoke at the exhaust die down. And then you go and give it a 20 minute blast. Okay, so there's no one here to help me today. So uh, I've got the one man method, which uh, involves a shower curtain rail pressed against the accelerator. And I shall uh, adjust it by uh, changing the incline of the seat to push. <laughs> To push and release the uh, the stick. At least that's the method. So we need to get it up to somewhere between I don't know two and two point two thousand three hundred to two and a half thousand RPM. Let's try that now.
Right now we let it sit for four minutes and then we do it again at 2000. Right, time's up. Let's start the engine and do the last one. There isn't much white smoke coming out this time around, I don't know what that means. Let's take it on a drive. Okay, so we'll just whiz up and down the road a little bit. Let the turbo spin up, spin down, spin up, spin down. Get the airflow pumping and then change all the revs up and down. I don't know if it's just because I haven't got the stereo on, but I can hear the, uh, I can hear the turbo spooling. I don't know if that's anything different because I don't usually, oof, that's close drive without the stereo on. I must say this this car can attack these corners <laughs> hell of a lot better than the Range Rover can. You can also use the paddle shifters go up and down and uh, make the revs artificially high I suppose there we go let's knock them up a little bit to manual let's come down again yeah on a note about the power that the car's got it's um, it's probably a little less impressive than I thought it might be. I did wonder whether there might be just be something stifling the power a little bit at first, but then it is more powerful than the Mercedes C250 I used to have. See, I've got to ignore the Range Rover because it's a very different car. It's a 3.6 V8 diesel with different characteristics. That's got two turbos on it and the thing weighs nearly three tons. This is like a ton lighter, has one turbo, and is a three litre diesel engine. It's kind of difficult to compare. Um, so, like I say, when, when you look at the facts and figures, this is only 58 or 56 horsepower, something like that, more than what you get on a C250 um, Mercedes. So it's not that much more, and to be honest, after I've thought about it, it, it feels about that much quicker, actually. It's not like a 300 horsepower car or anything. Uh, and I'm a little bit spoiled because the CLK 55 is, of course, a 370 horsepower car. So it's more than 100 horsepower, more than this. And uh, anyway, so it's different. So I, I think this is about right. It feels probably on balance like it's got the right sort of power it's not missing any tricks but a remap could definitely be on the cards to release a few more ponies I think that's definitely uh, could be on the plan I don't think I'm worried about the gearbox talk I don't think it's gonna struggle to handle it uh, so yeah let's give it a whirl I'll give it this for, for a diesel engine, uh, I've never had a straight six before, like this. It's got a good noise when you push it. Are we in sport now? Let's put it in sport. See if you can, I don't know if you can hear the engine or not. It's got a good noise for a diesel engine. I mean, it's no petrol V8, is it? But, uh, but it's, not a bad, it's not a bad noise for a diesel.